Thank you, Mr. President. I suggest now, Mr. President. on the report I just gave on the uh, conference table. Uh, one is that we have a, a big splashy uh, newspaper <laughs> See, there's some familiar faces out there. Uh, well, it's that way every day when I come home. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> well, first, let me welcome you, members of the Senatorial Trust, and thank you for what you've been doing. This may surprise you, but for many years, the U.S. Senate was not on the top of my hit list. 
Uh, hit parade. Hit. <laughs> hit list. Yeah. Yeah. I just realized I said that wrong. Hit list is a different thing. Session after session, it voted to spend more, tax more, regulate more, and meddle more in the lives of American citizens. I think it was Henry Adams who wrote, if I ever turn anarchist, it will be for the fun of murdering a senator. <laughs> now, obviously, that never crossed my mind. Well, not often. But I think we all felt the frustration. Now, because there may be some people here getting uncomfortable, let me explain. That was before 1980, and then you helped to give us the first Republican Senate in 25 years. Uh, and what a wonderful gift that was to find in our Election Day stocking. And I can't tell you how absolutely essential and central it is to what we're trying to accomplish for this country. Without a Republican Senate, without Howard Baker as the Senate Majority Leader, we'd probably be just getting the Cabinet confirmed by now. Uh, so let me say thanks right here to our Republican Senators and our Republican leadership. They've done a wonderful job. But what I said a moment ago is absolutely true. Without that one House on our side, very little of the things that we've accomplished so far, if any, could have been accomplished. Business would have been still going on in the same old way. I probably would have had a lot of practice at vetoing. And, uh, but even there, the odds of not getting them overturned would have been greater. But it's been this, this Senate that has given us the ability and the power to, well, just a little sample of some of the figures, although you probably know them all already from 12.4% inflation rate when we started. For the last six months, it has been running at around 2.8, and for the last three months, it's been running at less than 1%. And even one of those three months, it was below zero. It was actually deflation. <laughs> He's, George Bush has been heading up a task force having to do with regulations. We've, just through that task force, eliminated enough unnecessary regulations that the estimated amount of government-required paperwork imposed on the people has been reduced by 200 million man-hours. So, well, let me, as I say, say thanks again uh, to our senators. I know you're working hard, all of you, to keep that Republican majority, and there is no higher priority this year. Now, if at the same time, and I know you're the Senate trust, and so that's your pri top priority, your first job. If you have a little sideline time there and you want to help us get a majority in the House, can you imagine what that would be? <laughs> but from my experience over the last 17 months, one thing I can say for sure, the more Republican the Senate is, the more responsible it is. And while I'm on the subject of responsibility, uh, let me bring you up to date on what's happening with the budget. Although we didn't get everything we wanted, I was pleased the Senate House Conference Committee reached an agreement, and now it's up to both bodies to pass the resolution and then for the individual committees to implement it. It's in the committees, especially in the House, that the whole thing may come unraveled by those pushing their special interests and their pet projects. But I want you to know I, too, have a special interest or two, and I'll be sitting here watching the show ready to let out a yell on television if the Congress refers, returns to business as usual. The, there are tough votes ahead for our people in the Senate, and they'll need your support. And we need to give them some pats on the back and in encouragement for the election campaign this fall. A Republican majority simply must be returned to the Senate so that we can carry out the programs that have been started already. The, the improvements, I only gave you one angle, but the indices are beginning to come up. They're beginning to show that, uh, that little turn that we've been looking for. And uh, incidentally, uh, 
Some of them may not even know this. We reorganized the Inspector General's program. And I gave them one assignment, to be tougher than junkyard dogs. <laughs> and they, they turn in a report to me every six months. And so just a few days ago, they came in with their latest report. And in the preceding six months, they have found and saved $5.8 billion for the taxpayers of America. Uh, they, uh, it's uh, amazing what you can do with some cross-checking on the computers on uh, and finding out, as they did, a number of people receiving Social Security checks who've been dead for an average of seven years. Uh, they found another agency that was buying brackets at $318 a piece. They were available in a local store for $4 a piece. Uh, and one person was ripping off the commissary for $50,000 on pizzas. So, so, uh, so they're, they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do, and they're back out there now starting the, the fourth six months. But the progress we've made so far will evaporate. If we don't have that Republican edge, and I know that you will help us keep it. You know, I was just thinking, you all are so supportive and so friendly. If I didn't already have a job, I might like to run for the Senate myself. <laughs> well, I'm going to get off of here and come down there and mingle a little bit so we can at least say hello for a minute or two. But. Uh, Bless you all for being here and for, and for what you're doing. Just stay with it. And in the coming campaign, I still think the issues will be with us. We'll be able to point to things like inflation and some of the things we're doing. And the leadership, particularly of the House and on the other side, will only be able to point to the fact that they didn't want to cut the spending and fought like tigers to keep from doing it. And they didn't want to give the people a tax cut. And they fought against that. And if they want to campaign on those that program, let them go to it. Uh, I'll take our case to the people, and I think you will too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.